so glad that you're here. Why don't you look to your neighbor and tell them, I'm glad to see you this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, O oh God. We give you glory. Come on, say something sweet even unto God this morning. You can lift up those hands. You can worship the Almighty God. You are the sweetest name. We thank you for your presence, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. You are the sweetest name. You are the sweetest name I know. You are the sweetest name I know. Oh, oh. You are the sweetest name. You are the sweetest name I know. You are the sweetest name I know. Oh, oh. You are the sweetest name. Say you are the sweetest name. Sweeter than the honey oh.
why don't you just love on God today? He is worthy to receive all glory. He's worthy to receive all praise. Lift up your hands and just worship the Almighty God. We bless your name, oh God. There's no one else like you. We bless your name.
that the shadows can't deny. Come on, your name cannot be overcome. Whoa. Your name is a life, resurrection power. Your name cannot be overcome. Just your voice says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 you silence me. There's no place of fear in your breath. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence me. Jesus, there's no other name like him. What a beautiful name. What a wonderful name. We magnify your name, oh God. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Amen. Please be seated. you come with your sisters with your colleagues for all the men in the house this is also a call to action for you to invite as many ladies in your life as possible because God has promised from Psalm 36 verse 9 that through his light we as women we will see light and we will enjoy life in the mighty name of Jesus all right, so this is a call to action again for the ladies as well. As you saw, the t-shirts are available, multiple, multiple colors. All you got to do is you can get um, a t-shirt for yourself and for the people that you're coming with at Pages, which is just at the door to my right. You're going to see the, the bookstore there, Pages. You can get a t-shirt from there. And also, for those that are watching online, you can get a t-shirt online as well by going to Pages dot house of praise dot ca so it's pages dot house of praise dot ca so please make sure that you avail yourself of the balanced living women's conference 2024 t-shirt they only cost ten dollars so yes it's very subsidized can we give it up to jesus yeah yeah it's very subsidized just for you and also i just want to let all the young ladies between the ages of 17 to 35 that that girl that girl is also going to be part of the conference so please make sure that you come register do not come alone and i look forward to seeing you radiate with the light of god in the mighty name of jesus 
All right, so again, this is my welcome to all of those that are worshiping with us for the first time here at the House of Praise in person and also online. Thank you for being a part of this service. This is the House of Praise. The House of Praise is a church that is committed to raising champions and to making a difference. So wherever in the world, wherever bus stop that you are at, well, I am glad to let you know that you are in the right place because God knows knows that there is a champion in the inside of you that needs to come to this place to hear the word of God so that that champion can come out and make full expression for the benefit of humanity. So once again, you're very welcome. For those that are in the building um, for the first time, again, to my right, you're going to see a door welcome Mark Welcome Center, there's a group of champions that would love to meet with you and tell you a lot more about the House of Praise. And to my folks online as well, you're not left outside. If this is your first time at the House of Praise, you're going to see a link in the chat. I ask that you fill up that link. Again, the group of champions will be reaching out to tell you a lot more about the House of Praise. Now, today is day five of the fast. I don't know about you, but I feel sharp, I feel alive, I am so enjoying it, and I have no doubt that you as well is enjoying the transformative power of God through this fast. So I just want to remind you that we're going to be meeting tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So again, we'll be meeting online, we won't be meeting in church, so I encourage you to join with your family, share it with your friends as well, to join us this evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time online. And don't forget, make sure you have your communion element because again, every single day of the fast, we will be taking communion for every evening session. So please make sure that you tune in, be ready, come with an expectation and give the sessions your full attention because God is definitely in our midst. And I have no doubt that by the time we come day 40, you will be walking in a higher dimension of dominion in the mighty name of Jesus. All right, is somebody excited to be in God's house this morning? Yes, I am excited and I'm grateful to God that you are here in person and online and I am confident in Christ that the word of God that is coming to you this morning is going to bring about the change that you so desire in the mighty name of Jesus. So family, once again, you're very welcome. Very excited that you're here and for my folks that are joining us for the first time, looking forward to seeing more of you in the mighty name of Jesus. All right, so on that note, family, Please join me as we welcome Pastor Chuma. Praise the Lord. You know, I thank God that um, in God's family, it's a big banner. There's room for everybody. Um, you know, as uh, Corinne was talking about the fast, how that she's sharp and excited. Some of us are dealing with coffee withdrawal. Be honest, the Lord is good. <laughs> Some of us around this time, the smell of bacon can make you faint. <laughs> for me, it takes about a week for my body to accept that we're doing this. But we know that we will celebrate in the end somebody who is sure. God, I'm not convinced, I'm not convinced, I'm not convinced. If you are sure that you will celebrate in the end, give God a mighty hallelujah. If you haven't joined us, join us. It's going to be, it's incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, about, call it 28 years ago, God brought two people together, very unlike, unlikely circumstances. <laughs> brought two people together, one a pharmacist, one a trained lawyer, and brought them together, and they fell in love with each other, and they became a couple. They were passionate, love God, passionate about God, had elaborate plans to come to the West, to the, to, to the United States and take over the world commercially, not knowing that God had, yes, a plan for them to take over the world, but in a different way. So, 24 years to the day, <laughs> House of Praise was born. Wait for me, wait for me, wait for me. 
started with seven adults, two and a half children, $500 in the bank, to what God has done today. A global ministry with global impact that has changed the world for Christ. So ladies and gentlemen, shall we rise as we celebrate 24 years of exemplary, sterling, incredible ministry, PWA and PTA. Glory to God. Glory to God. Can we celebrate with PTA's favorite song? Just a little bit. Come on, church. Come on, just a little bit. Come. I have a... Celebrating. Oh, Lord. Hey, oh, Lord. oh Lord. I am very, very grateful for all you have done for me. Oh Lord, I am very, very grateful. Hey, and I say thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I am very, very grateful. Thank you, Jesus. For all We are very grateful, BWM and PTA. We thank God for calling you. You're accepting the call and what he has done through you. They've prayed for us. They've cried with us. They've supported us. They've believed God for us. They've dedicated their entire lives to ensure that you and I fulfill destiny. We cannot mention it, the things that God has used them to do. So I want you with your own mouth and your hands one more time. Appreciate the Lord. 24 years. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. And if this is what has God has done in 24 years, imagine what he will do in the next 24. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's a big testimony. Uh, but let me, let me keep going for somebody comes to grab the mic from me. Good morning, church. Um, for those who are here for the first time, we're about to uh, share two testimonies uh, that people have written and sent in of what God has done for them. Um, it's something that we do from time to time and we bring the words as they were written and we share them in the church to encourage our faith as a sign of what God is doing and knowing that God is no respecter of persons. If he did it for them, he can do it for you. The way we, we read it, we don't talk about the names of the people, but we read their testimonies as they've come to us. They're incredible. These two testimonies and um, Another thing that's interesting about them that I noticed was the timing. So this first one I'm going to read came in on April 9th. This was, if you recall, just one day before we started the Dominion Prayer and Fasting. And it was a Sunday before that Pastor, Pastor had preached the message about overcoming giants. Uh, and he led us in specific prayers. So just pay attention to that as I read the first testimony. Subject. God's divine protection for wife and I. Sounds like a newly married couple. <laughs> Good morning, PWA. I trust this email finds you well. Apologies for the long email, but I feel it's necessary to paint the full picture. I'm sending this email to testify of God's divine protec protection and for sparing me and my wife's life and my wife's my wife's lives just last night. My wife and I drove down to Ottawa late Sunday night for an important meeting on Monday morning and planned to leave around 3 p.m. back to the GTA. However, we we're tired and decided to take a nap at my uncle's house before driving back to the GTA. We left my uncle's house around 8 p.m. 
while putting my home address and my GPS, an email came in that was confusing to me. So I decided to pull to the side of the road to read it before driving out of the community. While I was reading this email, I noticed a pickup truck on the other side of the road parked about 12 yards away from us with his high beams flashing. I thought to myself, his lights are abnormally bright, but thought nothing of it. He then drove off with speed and his engine was really loud. So I said to my wife, that was excessive because they were still in the residential area. So to be going that fast was quite odd. I continued to drive out of the community. Not up to two minutes later, I heard the same loud engine coming towards us. And I asked her, isn't that the same car we just saw speeding off? But she didn't see the car when we were parked, neither did she hear him drive off. So she said, just to continue driving, that it could be any car. But I knew what I saw and heard and felt really uneasy. So I started praying as I continued driving. The car suddenly sped up aggressively right behind us, almost bumper to bumper, flashing his high beams at us. And at this point, it was clear he was chasing us. He cut into the other lane, drove next to us, looked me in the eye, and then sped off past us to the point we couldn't see the car anymore. So for a second, we thought maybe he was just mad because we were driving slow. For context, these were back roads in a rural part of Ottawa with no street lights, minimal car traffic, and just one lane going in each direction and a huge drop off into the ditches. I still felt very uneasy. So I, I told my wife to share our location with my family group chat and tell them what was happening and prepare to call 911 if it progressed further. As we continued down the road, we saw the same truck do a U-turn and was speeding down the road towards us and drove past us again. At this point, my wife was really stressed. So I stayed calm while praying in the spirit and just trying not to crash. I stepped on the gas, driving about 120 kilometers to create separation between us because I wasn't sure if he was going to come back. We drove for about one kilometer down the road and again, in less than 30 seconds, he was behind us again, bumper to bumper, almost looking like he wanted to drive us off the road. At this point, all I was thinking was, what's going to happen to my kids if this guy causes us to crash? At that moment, my wife told me to stop because we were not going to create enough separation and driving away was probably going to lead to a crash. So I stopped at the stop sign while still praying. And this car pulled up next to us, rolled down his window and said, what's up? In a very calm voice, while reaching for something on the passenger side, which we were thinking was a gun. Then I replied and said, is there a problem? And in that moment, he said this verbatim. I'm so sorry. I owe you guys an apology. It seems like I've got the wrong person. Someone just broke into my house 15 minutes ago and jumped into a car that looked like yours. And I thought you were the person when I saw you parked in my community. He went, to, he went on to apologize again, and we both went our separate ways. I'm not sure if that was the reason, but I'm 1,000% sure that if not for God's divine protection, that could have ended differently. Hmm. We hear so many stories of mistaken identity that end up being fatal, but we give God all the glory that this was not the case for us. Pastor, thank you for teaching us on Sunday how to enforce our victory over the enemy and leading us through those prayer points on Sunday. That whatever the forces of darkness have planned for me and my family will be destroyed. The plans of the enemy against my family are surely destroyed and will stay destroyed. And as I see you online at 7 a.m. tomorrow as we begin in dominion, praying, and fasting. We love you and PTA dearly and appreciate your leadership and guidance. Incredible. If that is not an advertisement for taking the pronouncements and declarations and prayers that come from this house seriously, I don't know what else 
uh, would be. One more time, let's appreciate God for thwarting the plan of the enemy. Thank you, Jesus. Testimony number two. Another testimony with very interesting timing. This testimony came in April 11th, this month. And um, it's uh, about balanced living. It's a testimony about balanced living last year. Very interesting. You know, we don't control the timing. God, God knows what he's doing. It's an incredible testimony coming in just as we are, we are about to have our balanced living uh, for 2024. I read. Balanced Living 2023 testimony. Good evening, HOP family. My, my testimony is from Balanced Living 2023. My family is thankful to God for all he has done in the space of one year. That Saturday morning, I attended BL 2023. I had just dreamt overnight that my husband hung himself. We were going through a tough season as he had been out of job since January 2023 and had become so thin. I remember in that dream, I was among women who were colorfully dressed and lots of colorful sweet things all around us. Everyone was merry. And then as I turned around, I saw my husband hanging in the dream. That early morning, I was distraught. I was contemplating staying at home to watch him so that that dream doesn't materialize. I finally decided to come for the conference. The whole ride was more like me begging him not to do anything bad to himself. He assured me that he'll be fine and none of it will happen. My heart was so heavy as he drove after dropping me off at the conference. While I was singing that Saturday morning at the conference, I was trying all my best not to wail. God opened my eyes and I saw his presence at the conference. He's indeed wide, filling the entire width of the room. He's indeed high, as I could not see his head. The height was through the roof. He told me that he came to comfort me so I can stop weeping. I told him, but you're so huge. I need a hug from someone whom I can rest my head on their shoulder. A motherly hug because I miss my mother and I haven't seen her in person in a couple of years. Besides, I don't know if I'll ever step back after experiencing a hug from you. Right there and then, an older woman whom I didn't know before tapped my shoulder from behind and gave me a hug. I, I wailed. I wept in her arms like a baby. And she kept telling me the whole time, it is well with you, my baby. Her height was the exact height I asked God. And she said all the things a mother would say to her child to comfort her. I was indeed comforted. And as I type right now, I'm still in awe of God's nearness to his own. Fast forward one year, my husband is looking healthy. He's, an, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> He's employed and was promoted within seven months. In fact, in fact, he's a celebrity at work. Everyone celebrates him. Different teams have asked him to join them. He is in a happy place compared to this time last year. And I am also happy. We are indeed filled with gratitude to Emmanuel, the God who is with us. Come on church, can we appreciate Emmanuel who is with us. Thank you, Jesus. What an amazing testimony. And again, if there was, I don't know a better advertisement for BL 2024, please register and invite as many people as you can. Please let's worship God. You 
are faithful till the end. Faithful God, I worship you. I worship you. You're too faithful to fail me. Do I have any witness in the house? In 
original day of the first Hosanna, when Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem, they welcomed him with a shout. Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, we honor you. We, of, we know you here, but we officially welcome you into our midst. Blessed be your name forevermore. All the things we have heard, all the things we have seen, all the things we have experienced is because of you. Lord Jesus, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Please receive our praise today. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. One more time, give him a shout of Hosanna! Whoa! Oh! Hallelujah! Please, as you take your seat, tell somebody around you, I will celebrate at the end. I will celebrate. Uh -huh, I will celebrate. I know you're looking at me funny right now. You're looking at me somehow. You think my situation will never change. But I've got news for you. I will celebrate. Oh, yes. I will celebrate at the end. I'm not going to die in the wilderness. This is not over yet. I might have been diagnosed with something serious. But it's not over yet. Because I'm going to celebrate at the end. Don't prepare to see my funeral. Because I'm going to celebrate at the end. Yes, it might look like I've been to the doctor. They've told me my fatigue level is zero I don't ovulate I, my spam count is zero nothing is gonna happen but I know I will celebrate I wanted to buy a house they told me I don't qualify they told me I don't qualify and I'm struggling right now financially but I know I will celebrate I've written that exam twice it's not working out even the second time I got the lower back than the first time but I do know this one thing I will celebrate I will celebrate at the end. I will celebrate at the end. If you will celebrate at the end, open your mouth. Give Jesus another shout of praise. I will celebrate at the end. Please be seated. God bless you. There's something powerful about taking God's word and declaring it from your own mouth. God never created us, neither did he ever intended that he was going to do everything on this earth. It was never part of his plan. Genesis 1.26, he says, let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. And what that means is that you are now, are now co-participants on what happens on this earth. We are co-participants with God. We are fellow laborers with him. This does not just start in Genesis, I mean, end in Genesis after the fall. You know, God, Jesus Christ came and restored man to that. So when Paul, the apostle, was going to speak in 1 Corinthians 3, let's start from verse 8. When Paul, the apostle, was going to write and tell us how this thing was going to work, he tells us the same principle. He says, evil plans and evil waters are one. Each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Verse 9. He said, we are God's fellow workers. Fellow workers. God is working. We are also working. We are God's fellow workers. So in Mark 16 verse 20, the Bible says they went everywhere preaching the word. God was working with them. God was not working as a substitute for them. God was not working on their behalf. God was working with them. God was working with them. On this earth, it has been determined in the council of eternity by God Almighty that nothing is going to happen here without his choice, the pinnacle of his creation, the zenith of his creation in this civilization, which is man, that you and I are going to bring it to pass together. So, we are joint here with Christ. So, God has said, you should open your mouth, he wants to feel it. It's very critical for you to understand like my wife will say, let me quote her, 
A soundless Christian is a signless Christian. You have to make the sound with your own mouth. It's not cool. And I know you don't do that, but maybe the person you brought to church today is doing that. It's not cool for you to close your mouth. It's not elitist for you to do that. Okay? I've met a lot of elitist people. I'm not elite. Praise God for that. And I'm not shy about saying that. I'm just Zionist. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? Yeah. If you want to describe me, if sociologists are going to describe me, uh, if they did the research, they would describe me as rough and tumble. That's the category I fall into sociologically. But, you know, I've met a lot of people, and people sometimes people think it's just, it's just cool and calm to be quiet. If you're cool and calm and quiet, somebody is already speaking into your own destiny. And I guarantee you what they're saying is not consistent with the will of God for your life. You have to open your own mouth and say something also. I will celebrate at the end. <laughs> hey, Satan, you're a liar. I'm going to celebrate at the end. I will celebrate with my wife at the end. I will celebrate with my children at the end. I will celebrate with my spiritual children at the end. I will celebrate at the end. Don't let it stop here. Even at home, open your mouth. Say it. There's no, you can never have an overdose of scriptural declaration. You can never have an overdose on it. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. Jesus was about to set out on the journey, all right, in the book of Mark chapter 5, from verse 35, Mark chapter 4 from verse 35. He was about to set out on the journey. He know this journey was perilous. The people that were with him were experts, okay? They were experts. They were experts in this area. At least four of them were fishermen. But Jesus said, he said it, Openly, he said, let us cross over to the other side. He said it, the other side. In other words, we're going to get there. He declared the end from the beginning. So along the line, if you read that story, the Bible says there was a web serious storm. The people that didn't say anything, they were the one panicking. The one that has said something. He knows what he has said, he will meet it where he said it. Ah, I will celebrate at the end. I will celebrate at the end. Come on, come on. Somebody book a celebration for yourself. Book a celebration for yourself. Book a celebration for yourself. I will celebrate at the end. My children will celebrate at the end. My wife will celebrate at the end. House of praise will celebrate at the end. The wind came, the water came, it was filling the boat. It almost destroyed those people. They did not say anything. Jesus said something and they went to sleep. Today, people don't say anything and they're sleeping. <laughs> he said it. You have to open your mouth. Even Jesus came and he taught us. He said, listen, you've got to have faith in God. In Mark eleven twenty two, And he said, you've got to speak to the mountain. Seriously? Yeah, you speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. Tell it to be removed. He said, it's going to obey you. You know, this thing about speaking, it doesn't, it's not just human beings. When we say, oh, um, maybe your name is Tayo. You say, I'm Tayo, come. Tyre comes. Oh, what's the name of Peter? Peter, come. And Peter, a human being responds to you. God wants us to speak to even creation. He listens to us. He says, Oh, at, oh, at, oh, at, hear the word of the Lord. Jeremiah 22, 29. Oh, at, oh, at, oh, at, hear the word of the Lord. The earth can hear. The sun can hear. The moon can hear. Every part of God's creation, they have ears. Look at it. Oh, earth, oh, earth, oh, earth. He called it three times and the earth had something. They have ears. Jesus spoke to the storm. The storm had ears, apparently. Apparently. And in, in, in Luke 17, verse 6, this is not my sermon. It's just an um, appetizer. Hallelujah. Since you've not eaten for some days now. Hallelujah. Jesus said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, you see, tree, not a human being, tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the seed. Come on, what will happen? Eat, not he, not she, eat. So eat can obey. Eat can obey. Barrenness is eat. Poverty is eat. Sickness is it. Look for 39. Look for 39. He stood over her. He rebuked the fever and it left her. It 
can leave you. It can leave you. Poverty, leave her alone. Barrenness, leave him alone. Sickness, leave them alone. See, as I've said it right now, it as hard. It's hard. You don't have to say it. You wake up in the morning, you go to the washroom. Don't allow your day to be dictated by you, for you by circumstances. Why should you allow situations to, to clog your own day? Satan is already the God of this world. If you leave it, he will book appointments for you. He will book appointments for you. You heard the testimony of that young man. Share the testimony. You know, thank God that words were spoken before you got on that trip in Ottawa. Do you know how many people have been killed like that? Mistaken identity. There was one, I don't know what her name was. Was it Brianna Phillips? Brianna something? You know, not Brianna Phillips in Jesus' name. But I know one Brianna Phillips in church. There's one Brianna Taylor or something like that in America. Taylor, yeah? Then they burst into her house and killed her. Just like that. How many mistaken identities do we have like that? Then we say, oh, oh, sorry, well, it must have been the Lord. The Lord gave it, the Lord take it away. No? No? You speak the word. You're traveling. Let the word get to where you're going to before you go out. Don't just say, um, take your phone. Uber app. The Uber is coming um, in about 10 minutes. And you're watching, you're watching. And then you come, you jump into the Uber. And then you go. Say something to where you're going to. So that as you land there, something is already waiting. Whoever wants to wait for you, that thing you have said destroys them before they get there. Before you get there. Thank you very much. I like you. I like you, my sister. You are receiving. You come from the same place I come from. You understand? You can't just go there ordinarily. I feel like I should just come down there and give you a hug. Thank you. You are encouraging me. You are encouraging me. You have to say something. If you come from where I come from, you can't just go anywhere. You have to say something. You have to say something. You have to say something. Once you book your ticket, you have to say, Ki No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Ki ata koma Oh, earth, oh, earth, hear the word of the living God. They went from nation to nation, one kingdom to another kingdom. He suffered no man to do them harm. He reproved kings for his sake. Say, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. Say, tell I'm letting you know. I will go in peace. I will come back in joy. The mountains and the hills shall clap their hands. You have to say something. You have to say something. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 17. Surely in vain is the net set in the sight of the bed. Witches, wizards, occultic people of my father's household, my mother's household, and all of you that have been rented and borrowed. Hear me! Everything you have put in place, it will not work. He that digs a pit shall fall into it. He that rolls a stone shall be rolled back on him. Whatever you have put in place, it will not work. It shall be said of me, as I go to this country I'm going to now, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. You speak like that, I receive favor. As I step into the place, favor. Corrupt immigration officers, you must move. The Red Sea parted, they must part for me also. You speak. When you show up there, they look at you. They say, go. Just go. You have said something. The one that wants to be difficult, that morning, he resumes his shift. He says, he says to the first person, second person, you are still on the queue. Just as you're about to get there, he's trying to prove difficult. Suddenly, he catches the area. Ah, and he has to go. Hallelujah! It's what you said. It's what you said. And he has been eyeing you, looking at you that, I'm going to deal with you. I can see you. Three people, three more people to go. I'm going to deal with you. Suddenly, the area grips him. And they have to force him out. And even as he's going, he's thinking, I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back. But when he's going to the washroom and he sees out there, God keeps him there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because of what you said. Because of what you said. So are you still ready to say something? I will celebrate. Open your mouth now. I have a wonderful future with a happy ending. I will celebrate at the end. My children will celebrate at the end. Oh, though my beginning is small, my latter end shall greatly increase. There's no sorrow in my future. There's no tragedy in my future. I will not die, believe, to declare the works of God. I will celebrate at the end. Thank you, Jesus. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Glory 
bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want to do something. This is concerning your safety. This is concerning your safety. Please answer the question correctly. No, don't this is not the time to be there. Let's see. I, I come here by God's grace, by the mercy God has shown me. I come here with prophetic auction. Don't take that of things like that. How many of you will see 31st of December 2024 in joy? Hallelujah! If you will see it with joy, with testimonies fully loaded, now open your mouth, give Jesus a shout! You will see the end of this year with joy. You will see the end of this year with joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Please be seated. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. The song that is singing in heaven that I'm picking in my spirit that is relevant to me right now is Miracle Walker just play it for me You are the Miracle Walker Oh I'm a Miracle A Miracle And come and A Miracle want to join the elders in heaven and the angels in heaven to sing this song with us. Miracle. Oh, you are a miracle walker. Come and do a miracle. A miracle. Come and do a miracle. Just the strings. Destiny, bring it up. You are destiny, and come on, my destiny, my destiny today. We 
bow before you, we honor you. Glory to your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Unlocking your faith for possibilities. Unlocking your faith for possibilities. We are now in a season whereby all things are possible to him that believes. We are now in a season whereby all things are possible to him that believes. All things are possible to him that believes. Unlocking your faith for possibilities. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18. Here am I. And the children whom the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonders in Canada. We are for signs and wonders in whatever country you're living in. From the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion, we are for signs and wonders. We are not for trouble. We are not nuisance. We're not here to create a nuisance. No, we're not rubbish. We are for signs and wonders. Mark chapter 16 and the 17 verse. Mark 16 and the 17 verse. All these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. In my name they will run out demons. All these signs shall follow them who believe. Father, we honor you. We thank you for your word. We receive your word today with thanksgiving. In Jesus' mighty name. Every child of God is designed. Designed. If a child of God, for he came to his own, his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right one translation says the power. This is John chapter 1 verse 11 to 12. He gave the right to become sons of God. So if you have put your faith in Jesus Christ as your savior, you have to understand that you are no longer the old creation. Okay? For if any man, any man, any man, any man, no matter what you have done before, if any man be in Christ, behold is a new creature. All things are passed away. The limitations of before are passed away. The zenith of what could happen to you and I before was determined by experts. But that has gone with the old nature. Right now, all things have become new. A new world, a new world described as the new and living way has now been opened. It's a new world of possibilities. Friends, all things are possible right now. I say all things are possible right now. You are designed to be a sign and a wonder. Uh -huh. Say with me, I'm designed. I'm designed. Come on, say with me, I'm designed, I'm designed to be a sign and a wonder. That is very scriptural. You are designed to be a sign and a wonder. This is a psalmist that says in Psalm 71 verse 7, he says, I have become a wonder to many for the Lord of hosts is my strong refuge. I became a wonder too many. I became a wonder to my doctors. I became a wonder to the health professionals that were looking after me. For when they discharged me from the hospital and when they saw me again, they could not believe. When they came and they did their word round and they saw me lying in bed, they looked at me and they looked at it and said, call your nearest relatives. Let them come and speak to you because you might not be able to move on again in life. But then they came back again 24 hours later and they look at the person and they say, what on earth is this? They couldn't believe it. I know of a man, true life story because God gave me the privilege in life and the grace to pray with him. He had brain cancer. He went in America. This is America. So America. And he went, he did a test. He did a test for him. And they told him, it was in the scan, whatever it is, whether it's CT scan, I can't remember, or M MRI. But they told him this cancer is, the size of it is five times larger than the average size. And they scheduled him for an operation. It just so happens that the day they scheduled him for operation was the month of January. I remember clearly. The operation was scheduled for January. It was going to be the exact 10th year anniversary that they did ex the exact same operation on his elder sister, and she did not survive it. And he was at the same age. 
So I told him, I said, listen, clearly to me, I said, no matter what happens, don't let them open your head. Because you won't come out. It's already been scripted. Exactly 10 years later. <laughs> so, and of course, when you say something like that, you know, you've got to put your skin in the game. Today we have many Christians, they just talk. They say, I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay, if you're with me, show it. I flew down to meet him in the U.S., stayed in his house. We fasted and prayed together for three days. I stayed in his house. This is not going uh, and coming. This is not how I'm praying, I'll be seeing you. No, I flew down to the U.S. I was staying in his house. Every morning, in the morning, we start up, we pray. It was a prayer schedule, like every three hours. This is a serious issue. We pray. There was no time for this thing or what do you think? What about the economy? How is it going? Nothing like that. We finish praying one session. I go into the, into the room, to the, one of the rooms that he had graciously given me in his house. I would just stay there, reading my Bible. When the hour for the next prayer session, which is about two, three hours later, I come out again. Shall we lift up our hands? Let's thank God. We thank God. Bah! We go after the enemy again. We did that for three straight days. By the time we finished praying, all of my joints were out. And don't forget, this was some, some times ago now, about 17 years ago now. So I was still a bit um, younger than this. But all, <laughs> and uh, I had a lot of hair. <laughs> you know, I had hair. It's when you came to this church. That my hair is in it. If you're wondering, why come this man doesn't have hair? It's you. It's you. It's your fault. It's your fault. <laughs> All the people that came before you, my hair was still there. <laughs> All of my joints were aching me. When I sat on the plane and I was coming back, all of my joints were aching me. And I got back here. He went for a test. I was so, we were all so confident that it was, this was the enemy, the enemy has lost. He went for a test, they checked it, and they said the cancer is still there. The tumor is still there. Ah. You know, this is where sometimes we as Christians, we say, well, I've done everything. I mean, if you even see what I did, even one pastor, a pastor came from, from Canada, he even stayed with me three days. We fasted, we prayed, we didn't eat, we didn't do anything. And see, God, has, God is not faithful. No, 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 no. There's nothing like that. There's nothing like that. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29. Hebrews 11, 29. Hebrews 11. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as of dry land. Whereas the Egyptians attempting to do the same thing. What happened to them? They drowned. Look at the next verse. The next verse. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. Come on. After they were encircled, it wasn't a one-time action. So there's a the dimension of faith depending on the situation, not depending on you. That you can say Goliath only one stone. Even though you pick five. But you throw one, Goliath comes down. And there are some issues. You need to go around again. So I told him, I said, we're going to go around again. So this is how we're going to do it. I've come, you come now. So he came. I said, this is how we're going to be doing it though. I said, because you're not going to die. You're too young. We're in our 30s then. I said, you're too young. I said, come, 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 come. He came, he flew down here. You know, and he followed, he listened. That's another story entirely. <laughs> because stubbornness is like witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> he flew down here myself and him again pray standing before the altar of God 12 midnight afternoon, midnight we're standing before God at Lenwood Drive in our previous old place old church building pray we did that again for some days then he flew back again to the US he said he was more confident then he went booked an appointment for another test Tell you a true life story. Then he went for the test. They checked the test. <laughs> he said when he sat in there, you know, waiting for the for his tongue, he was just he could just feel his song in his heart. Feel his song in his heart. He was just rolling the song in his heart. Then he went for the test. He did the test. Usually maybe they come out, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes, something like that. 30 minutes. They didn't show up. Ah. 45 minutes. One hour. No show. They didn't come and tell him the result. They didn't say anything to him. Ah. What's happening? One hour, 30 minutes. Nothing. About two hours. Then they came out later on. They said, Ah, we're so sorry. We're so sorry for keeping you waiting. Ah, what's happening? He said, Well, you know, when we looked at it, we didn't see anything. 
He said, so, so we had to do, with the doctor, the attending physician, and the radiologist, they had to call some other experts in the U.S. and send the test to them and tell them, please, maybe our own eyes is deceiving us here. Check this thing for us. I'm telling you, friends, they could not find the tumor again. They didn't do that operation. They didn't open his head. Then so, so he, he told me, they would say, oh my goodness, we're going to celebrate. Go, let's celebrate Jesus. We honor Jesus. And as all of that happened, suddenly I picked in my spirit. I said, how old is your son? He told me the age. I said, how old was the son of your sister, the pastor? It was the exact same age. Ah! I said, they will, <laughs> I said, something has been set in motion. You couldn't go. They are going to try and take your son. I said, so we've got to pray for him. And then we'll pray for the son. Pray for the son. We'll pray for the son. And you will think it's all gone. But you see, it's a spiritual law. I needed to say this. I don't know why I'm going that direction. But for somebody here that is practicing pillow Christianity, you need to understand, you've got to get out of that pillow Christianity. All right? And the son, the son was okay. But about 10 months, around that time, when it was around, the son was going to turn 10, around that time, his junior brother had what was in another country, living in another country, just had what was just a slight, small, little fatigue, fever, went to the hospital, laid in bed, one person came in and thought they were going to give, the person, give him normal saline, normal saline, and they gave him 50% extras. Unfortunately, he didn't make it. He didn't make it. Because the spirit of death had been unleashed. Somebody has to go. And it was the weakest link. Don't joke with spiritual things, friends. Don't joke with spiritual things. But I pray for you. You have an appointment to celebrate at the end. You will celebrate at the end. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are a sign and a wonder. You have become a wonder to many. Amen. Those that thought that you immigrating into this country that you will regret it. They think that you coming into this country you will regret it. You told them you were going to buy a house. You got excited. And they, they think you are going to regret it. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not regret it. Amen. God will turn it around for you. Amen. Even if you have made a mistake before. The blood of Christ will wipe away your mistakes in Jesus' name. He will justify you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please take your seat. We belong to a kingdom of signs and wonders. Yeah, we belong to a kingdom of signs and wonders. And God wants to use it to prove that it doesn't end here on earth. It doesn't. It doesn't end here on earth. It does not end here on earth. Stop looking at what is contrary to the will of God as the conclusion of the matter. It's not. I'm telling you, by the grace of the Almighty God, based on the authority of this word, this is not theory, this is something I practice. I can tell you I've received many, many things that look like the conclusion of the matter, but it is not. It's not. If this book does not say it's the conclusion, it's not the conclusion. If this book does not say, listen to me, listen, listen to me. I know, without the shadow of that, and I've heard the voice of God, I still heard the voice of God, you know, on Friday, clearly, the voice of the Spirit of God. Clearly, on Friday, when he spoke to me, I, I, I hear the voice of God by the grace of God, by the mercy he's giving me regularly. Okay? I get that. But let me say this to you. There's no voice of spirit that you hear that is superior to this. Of course, if it's the Holy Spirit, it will be consistent with this. So don't tell me that you had a dream or you saw a vision or you saw something. If it is contrary to this book, there's no light in it. There's no light in it. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20. So I'm telling you, you take whatever you think you've received. Take it. Don't tell me, oh, my mom was praying. She, one of the prophets that prayed for my mom told me that she, she has six children that one of them will not have a child. Who's that so? Who's that prophet? It's a lying spirit that came upon him. It's a lying spirit. Oh, you know, they told my mom, they told my mom that, you know, that, you know, he has, he has three children and that um, two of them will be great and one of them will not. So maybe, maybe, maybe that one that will not be is me. Who told you that? Here I am and the children the Lord has given me were for signs and wonders. All 
of your children shall be taught by the Lord. And great shall be the peace of your children. You will not labor in vain. And you will not bring forth children for trouble. If he does not speak according to this book, there's no light in it. So, well, you know, I was listening to one man of God and he said, you know, poverty, you know, God takes us into poverty and brings us into poverty so that we can learn some things. Let me say this to you. There are people that can learn in different environments. I went through financial insufficiency for a time in my life. I did not learn anything. <laughs> I did not learn anything. So, so well, what did you learn at that time? Nothing? Not, you don't know what pressure is. When you are under pressure, and they're about to kick you out of the house. Don't go to the car park there. Maybe you pass through the car park there, and somebody points to a particular kind of uh, mechanical piece there. And you say, oh my God, these people always, ah man, these people don't have, you don't even know nothing. I went to a rental tribunal here in Mississauga. I couldn't pay my rent. I got home one day, I preached on a Sunday like this. I got home on a Monday morning, I found a letter, bam, on my door. It says, from the sheriff's office. He said, I have, I command you to vacate this premise in 24 hours. That's what the letter says. I still have a copy of it. Just like I have a copy of my, of my uniform from, from McDonald's and my ID card. Because <laughs> it reminds me of where I'm coming from. Reminds me. I still look at it yesterday evening. Yes? Because he keeps on reminding Jesus, God told them. He said, when you're going to the promised land, don't go, don't go. He said, he said, don't be in a hurry. He said, stand, let the priest stand in the river Jordan. Let them take stones. It will be a memorial. So when your children's children ask you, what are these stones? You will tell them. The problem with some of us that we can't worship God is because we've forgotten where we're coming from. Now you're a senior VP. Senior VP. You that you used to do pizza runs. You're not, you're, not, you're not senior VP. So when we say lift up your hands, well, <clears throat> people see me on LinkedIn all the time. They always ask me for questions on LinkedIn. Even this one, I'm mentoring them. I'm mentoring these ones. They're looking up to me. How am I going to be lifting up my hands anyhow? I've got to, got to understand that I've got to do this thing. I've got to be prima and proper. VP. Your name, there's no letter V in your name. There's no letter P in your name. Where you were, you were the poor that was in the dust. And God raised you up. That's the more reason why you should not be ashamed of your testimony. I'm not ashamed of my testimony that I couldn't pay my rent at one particular time. I've said this thing several times. And I'll continue to say it. I couldn't. I couldn't put food on my table. It was my roommate. And I was married. It was my roommate. I wait for him to go. I hit was broke. It was broke too. We we're all broke. <laughs> and we we're all pharmacists. But it was also broke. But it was not broke as levels. <laughs> it was broke. But my own broke just uh, was a greater degree. You know, there's normal broke. Economy is bad broke. But there's economy is bad broke. Assisted. Assisted by forces. My own was also powered. <laughs> not tea was working. He would go and buy the food. He would come back and would put something together that looks colorful. And that's how we're going to eat. I was sleeping on the floor. Sleeping on the floor. Somebody said, oh, we're in Nigeria. No! In London, England. The country of the queen. <laughs> Just living there. Bro! In this same country, pastor in this same church. I went to the Mississauga Rental Tribunal. I couldn't pay my rent for three months. Someone said, oh, maybe you didn't pay. I, it was in the place of prayer that my wife called me. <laughs> I was praying. I was actually praying in Lower Drive. Praying about the issue. You know, you have no prayer. You don't even know prayer. Sometimes when we say pray, you say, I can follow Lord. You don't know prayer. Prayer, they're about to kick me out. Where am I going to live? Shuakaya, shuakaya. I prayed. And my wife called me. I picked up him. He said, The landlord said, No. Ah. I got to the rental tribunal. It was humiliating. Humiliating. Microphone. Those people, if I have only one recommendation, can they please raise the decks so that at least you can speak the way God has created you? You have to balance this. <laughs> can the defendant please let us know his name? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> what is that? Very humiliating. I know what it means. I stood there, my wife and I, I felt for her. I felt for her. Couldn't be her end. But you know, this God, the prayer was not wasted. 
when that man, I don't know what, what they call him, maybe it's justice of peace, I don't know. The man looked at him, he said, so, he said, so young man, what? Can't I said, hmm. I look at him, I was, it's a long story, it's a long story. <laughs> but let me give you the abridged version, the Canadian Polish version. You know, so I just told him, like, you know what, I'm trained as a pharmacist and that was what I came into Canada to do. And we're just facing a bit of challenges right now. But we know we're going to be getting, but this is just, I just, I didn't tell him that. <laughs> People from my village, <laughs> deep people. I didn't tell him that. So he looked at us and he said, he said, you know, I consider you to be reasonable and to be to somebody that wants to you know, make a honest living in this country. He said, so I'm going to send you to mediation. I said, what is that? Because I couldn't even have a lawyer. They gave me legal aid. It was a legal aid lawyer that I ran into in the court premises. That stood for me. So they took us to mediation. It was at the mediation that legal aid found the, tech, the legal aid lawyer found the technicality. It was that technicality that he said. And I said to the landlord, too, I said, huh? <laughs> so, you see yourself now? The technicality was very simple. On the rental document, it was the name of the mother of the guy that was on the rental document. But when he filed the form to kick us out of the house, it was his own name. So they said, you don't own the house now. He said, it's my mother. They said, in law, that's not recognized. There's no document to prove that both of you are related. I said, hey. Yeah. Mm. So my lawyer told me, he said, careful, careful. He said, this is only going to buy you. He said, this is only going to buy you time. I said, that's all I need. I just need time. I remember clearly. So the man I said, okay, okay, okay. That the ones we are owing is going to forgive us if we agree to vacate that house on the 31st of March, and we'll put it in writing. He said, the past is the past. Ah, and I remember that the blood of Jesus wipes away our sin. I said, okay. I said, the lawyer said, wait. I said, there's no need to wait outside. I said, I'm ready. Ah, crazy fit, man. I said, I'm ready. So the lawyer said, are you, where are you going to go? I said, I don't know anywhere I'm going, but I'm going to sign it. I said, it's good. I said, it's a good deal. This was the last day. The woman said, you know what? I have an, someone that can help you to get a place in Gin and Finch. Now, if you're watching outside of this place, <laughs> it's just not a, yeah. It's not a place where you want to bring, yeah. Yeah. You get the point. So I, I signed. We left the court. We we're bouncing. Hallelujah. We we're bouncing. We go back home. We knelt down. We worship God. We knew there was a plan. And I called uh, an agent. I said, look for a house for me I want to buy. <laughs> I'm telling you a true life story. This is not a joke. No exaggeration. No. This is exactly what happened. I said, I want to buy. I said, I want to buy a house. The man said, yeah. I said, yeah, buy a house. Uh, buy a house. So it's okay. So he looked, he looked, he looked, he looked. He looked. Finally, he found, found one in Milton. Okay? Which is, if you're watching outside, is outside of the city of Toronto, it's a suburb. So we signed. I signed to buy the house. So I give it, and incidentally, <laughs> we're traveling. We're traveling. So I signed to buy the house, and we're traveling. We're traveling because, not because we had money, but because church people had said, Pastor, you know, you know, it's your anniversary, and we just wanted you to, you worked so hard, wanted to rest. I said, hey. He said, yes. He said, so we booked a place for you to travel to Florida. They booked a nice hotel. So they put money together, some people in the church, and they sent us there. So I was traveling. So it was while I was, while I was away that the, the agent called and said, they've accepted the offer. Ah, I said, praise God. <laughs> then he said, he said, the next, so that was the piece of good news. The other part was worrying. He said, because when I signed the offer, you, in those days, it was simple. It was a $5,000 deposit. Now, $5,000 in those days? Ah, it's not $5,000 to you. It was something. And for me, it was a immovable mountain. So he said, $5,000. I look at the and I said, ah. So, so I said, so what are we going to do? He said, no, 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 Pastor, I was just informing you. He said, when you come back, you can be paying me. I've given the money. So I said, okay. I said, I said, I said, good, good, good. God bless you. God bless you. But you know, it's not yet over. 
But they, no, they, but they sent us on this, this trip to go. So Topsy and I, we slept in the hotel one night. Very comfortable hotel. We slept, ah, all our bones that were almost broken came together. Ah, but ah, in the middle of the night, I woke up. I said, Topsy, Topsy, Topsy. I said, this is bad, though. I said, when we get back home, there are issues, though. I said, what do you, what are you, are you thinking what I'm thinking? She said, yes. <laughs> she said, yes. I said, she said, what are you thinking? I said, I'm thinking we should go and tell them that we want to change our hotel and collect our money. He said, that's exactly what I was thinking. I said, oh. True life story. We got ourselves together. We got to the reception. I said, you go. Because, you know, your own, my own, my, your own, you can still speak better than me. Clearer than me. I said, because if I get there and start speaking, it'd be worse. So she got there and said, a woman, you know, the usually is better. So she stood in front of me. She got there. I was behind her. She said, oh, good morning. I said, oh, good morning. So, Mr. Kisiko, did you, did you have a good rest? She said, yeah, 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 I had a good rest. She said, but you know what? I, my, my, the whole place was not comfortable. Not comfortable. The room was this. I, I, I just, the room was, no. I just couldn't sleep. And she couldn't sleep. Because we were discussing this overnight, so she just said, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> True life story. And then they said, so what can we do? We're going to make a change. We'll change your room. She said, no, no, no. They said, no, 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 we're going to make it comfortable. Oh, no. She said, no. She said, I've got to change my hotel. I've got to change my hotel. She said, they said, oh, really? Oh, we're so sorry. They're so sorry. She said, no, it's OK. It's OK. <laughs> they said, she said, so, they said, oh, my god. She said, she, then she said, what's your refund policy? They said, no, no, we're, we're going to refund that. And the night you stay, they won't, they won't even, they said, we're going to refund everything. Then they now asked a question. They said, where's the credit card you used for the booking? But, you know, this was a gift to us. We didn't have the credit card. So, that's where me, I came in. Kabaya, kabataya. So, this is the PowerPoint, because I saw she was struggling, because she's elite. Those kind of things just threw her off. That's not part of our script. I was still stepping in there. I was stepping there. I was stepping there. I said, I'm going to help you here now. <laughs> and I, and I, and I just stepped there. I just told them, I said, actually, at this point, you know, we, we came in there. It was our, you know, our marriage um, anniversary, wedding anniversary. So we, we came in there and we were going to do a lot of shopping here. So actually, we're going to need some cash to do that. So who prefer it in cash. The woman looked at this and put the money together and put it in cash. Now, she came back again and said, so that the woman would not be thinking, she said, can we have some come up with like the list of some hotels? The woman started giving us serious hotels. <laughs> so we collected it from her. We said, thank you so much. Thank you. So, oh, I'm so sorry. We said, oh, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> Look at that money. Put it in her pocket. As we were going, I told Topsy, I said, Topsy, none of those hotels, though. You know, that's our issue. So let's, I said, let's find one that is $29.99. <laughs> when you, you and I, we will we, be fine. It's only three or four days now, five days. We, I said, we'll be fine. That's how we slept in those, one of those nice. Have you seen um, Coming to America? You seen that kind of hotel? Yeah, something, just, just a step above that. You know, we slept there twenty nine ninety nine. We came back home, we had our cash. We were able to pay the $5,000. And then I won't, I'll cut short the story, then we were able to move into that house. It's a long story, but we were able to eventually get, that's, we moved from that, I couldn't pay my rent, to owning my own property. <laughs> Today, to the glory of Jesus Christ, he made it so, it's not only one that we have. And I can tell you this, uh, uh, I can tell you this. So how will I forget what God has done? I'm not ashamed of this. You can look at me and say, my goodness, I don't even believe in my God. I thought you were like high up there. Look at you, my God. I just kind of like lost respect for you. Hey, I feel for you. <laughs> I feel for you. I feel for you. I would rather, rather get affirmation and commendation from God than your respect. Yeah. Yeah. Than your respect. When you respected me, I couldn't put food on my table. But when God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, food has never ended on my table.
Unlock your faith for possibilities. That testimony was shared for somebody here to understand. You unlock your faith for possibilities. It's not over. Don't panic. Don't panic. Don't let them tell you. Don't panic. How do you unlock your faith for possibilities? Let's look at it quickly. I will tell you three or four things, then I will turn, um, elaborate on one, then we'll continue next time. How do you unlock your faith for possibilities? Are you inspired by this at all? Yes. Let me tell you four things. Let me tell you quickly, and then I will e- emphasize one. The first thing is flexibility. The second one is generosity. The third one is sens- sensitivity. And the fourth one is authority. Flexibility, generosity, sensitivity, and authority. Flexibility, generosity, sensitivity, and authority. Let's talk about authority for a few minutes. And then I pray for you. We bring the service to a close because we're meeting again at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But it's completely online this time around. Okay, for our prayers this evening with our communion. Shall we talk about authority for a minute? Yes, sir. What is authority? Authority is a right, right to act that has been delegated by a superior. The right to act that has been delegated by a superior. Or shall I say the act, the right to act within a domain. This right is been delegated by a superior. All right? I'm going to tell you some, one or two things here right now. It might shock you a little bit, but you, think, you will think about it. So authority is different from power. Okay? Now, in the Bible, for example, in the KJV rendition of um, Genesis, sorry, of Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. All right? That's the KJV version. But it should not be translated power there. All right? It's in the NKJV, you will, see the, you will see it in the NKJV. It says all authority because it's exousia. Okay? It's authority. Authority. It's different from power. Okay? In the Bible, there are seven Greek words used for power mainly. Authority, authority is not power. Power is dynamis. It is ability. Okay? Ability. Okay? But authority is different. Authority does not move things by itself. Power does. Okay? So, the, one of the easiest ways for you to understand it, the simplest ways for you to understand this is, is this. One of the easiest ways for you to understand this is this. So, if I come in here right now, this bottle of water, and it's on this chair, all right? Now, what I want to do is to drink from this bottle of water, all right? So, I stand up from where I am, okay? You know it takes energy and power to be able to stand up, right? The ability to do work. Are you following? Yes, all right. And then I walk towards it, and I take it, okay, by myself, open it and drink it, that's power that I'm using. But the bottle of water is there. That's not the only way to get it done. If I say, by the give me that bottle of water. Okay? Have I achieved the same result? Yes. So one is authority, one is power. Power, you have to release it and do it. But authority, you leverage on somebody to do it. Okay, you love it, and the reason why the reason why authority is so you need to understand the reason why authority is so powerful is that I told him to stand up and bring me the bottle of water, and he obeyed. And the reason why he obeyed is because he senses that I derived my authority from somebody else too. So he has reasoned and perceived that a higher authority, Jesus the Christ, the head of the church, put me here. So when I said go bring it for me. He did because he's not just obeying me. He's obeying the one that put me here. If he's disobeying me, he's going to be disobeying the one that put me here also. Are you following this now? This is very important. Okay? So the difference easily for you to understand is authority is, and power. The difference is the badge and the gun of a police officer. The badge of a police officer is the authority. Thank you. And the gun is the so then that tells you something very importantly. It's possible to have power without authority. 
Because there's so many people that have guns and they don't have the badge. Is that right? So Satan has power. When you have a gun but you don't have the authority to use it, we say it's illicit arm. You're not supposed to have it and all of that. Satan has power. So don't let anybody deceive you he doesn't have power because Jesus said he has power. And I think Jesus, I would rather believe Jesus. Luke 10, 19. I'm telling you this just for you to understand. Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the... Yeah, so I give you the excuse here to trample on the serpents and scorpions and over all the dynamics of the enemy. No matter what the power of the enemy is, I give you authority. Why? 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 Of course, he also gives us power. Don't get me wrong. He also gives us dynamics. We also have that. We have dynamics. We have all of the other kind of power, kratos and all of that. But I want to focus on authority for you to just understand. And it is the simplest level that every Christian should be able to walk in. That's why I want to focus on it. Can I have some minutes? Can I go ahead? Yes, authority. Now, authority in Christ, authority in Christ is automatic from the day you get born again. Listen, that's why it's very important in our syllabus to teach first about authority before we teach about power. For you to understand authority before you understand power, and I'm going to teach on power during this fast, okay? But it's important you first understand authority. Authority in Christ is automatic. So in other words, once you get born again, listen carefully to me now. You get born again today, right now, bang. You have authority immediately. Now, let me explain something to you. And this is part of what will start shocking you a little bit now. But when I explain later on, you'll get it. When you get born again today, in Christ Jesus, I'm not talking of in church operation. <laughs> in Christ Jesus, the authority you have, once you get born again today, is the exact same authority I have. And I've been born again now since 1995, so call it about 29 years. Once you get born again today, a few seconds, it is the exact same authority I have in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. I'm not talking of church operation. All right? Are you following me? Yes. Now, what makes the difference, however, is our understanding and consciousness of that authority. That's what makes the difference. So I have, definitely if you get born again today, while we have the same level of authority, but you won't understand it. You can't have the level of understanding I have. All right? The level of understanding I have, okay, and the consciousness I have about that authority. Because that consciousness comes both in two ways. It comes both in the acquisition of knowledge and the experiential use of that knowledge. Kai, Satanaya. So you have gained knowledge of the fact that I have the authority and by reason of use over time, you have experienced that this authority works. And that is where I have been born again, like I said, for almost 29 years, all right? Definitely 29 years of using the authority, of reading and studying, I've acquired knowledge and I've, by experience, I know the authority works. You that you got born again today, you can't know that. But positionally in Christ, we are the same. We have to teach this. You have to accept that fact. And why is it so? Why is it so? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 to 22. Turn to it, please. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 to 22. I'm reading from the NKJV version of the Bible. On Easter Sunday, I told you that Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 is one of the most powerful verses in Scripture. And he goes on to say, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. All right, now pay attention to the next two words. Far above. Can you say that with me? Far above. Say it again. Far above. One more time. Far above. Now, far above all principality. How many principalities? 
and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age, which is when the Bible was, when the book of Ephesians was written, but also in that which is to come where we are today. Every name of any idol, of any demonic force, whatever the name is, you know, in Greek mythology, you have all of my lives of these gods, right? Then the name sounds very nice. <laughs> Zeus. <laughs> you have all of this. You know, Zeus, the name they call Zeus, it's the same Zeus, right? They call it the God of Thunder and all of that. The name they call Zeus in my own language is Doom. When you hear it, you know that. And the way they call it in Pastor Chuman's language is even deeper. <laughs> but it's the same Zeus. Okay. So don't, don't let Greek mythology just make you feel somehow. Far above every one of them. And the Bible says, not only in this age, but in the age which is to come, verse 22, and he has put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Now listen to this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Ephesians Chapter 2 and verse 6. It says, And raised us up, raised us up together, and made us sit together, us together, up together, sit together, up together, and sit, repeat it one more time, up together and sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Let me explain what this is saying to you. So, you see, in the spirit realm, the authority you have, okay, in, in the spirit realm, you cannot issue out a command, all right, for something to move until you are higher than that thing. You can only speak and command what is below you. Okay? You cannot tell what is on your level to move. It will move. You can't tell what, if you tell what is higher than you to move, you get a knock. It's only in the natural here that someone that's higher than you, you can walk up to them, particularly in a democratically influenced environment like this, and throw apple pie on them, slap them, throw flowers, throw things on them, and shout them down. In the spirit realm, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Act Angel Michael is an archangel. Lucifer was an anointed cherub that covered. Okay? The cherubs are the highest level of the angels because they are the ones that are protecting the Shekinah glory from destroying everything God created. Because the Shekinah glory of God. You remember the Ark of Covenant? You see those two? The, the, the cherub. Lucifer, according to Ezekiel chapter 28, was an anointed cherub. When they were disputing in the book of Jude over the body of of Moses, Michael did not say, get away. He said, the Lord rebuke you. He has to use the name of somebody higher than him because he's looking at him and he's saying, I cannot try that. It's all, you have to. So that is why, now, that is why when Jesus rose from the dead, he had his key. You have to understand. It is very important. It's not just put in there as an addendum. It's very important that he's seated at the right hand of God the Father. He's seated in that place because that is the highest position in hierarchy. First Peter chapter 3, verse 22. First Peter 3, 22. Is anybody getting something here? Who has gone into heaven? He's talking about Christ, okay? When you read it in context. And is now at the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers have been made subject to him. But I told you in the Academy of Faith, by a Bible translation, you can understand. So you read this thing now, you are dozing off because it doesn't all make sense to you. You need to be a Bible scholar, someone that are very familiar with what is written for you to be able to read a formal translation like this and get something strong out of it. So change it to a dynamic translation for me, NLT, so that they can see. New Living Translation. Now Christ has gone to heaven. He is seated in the place of honor. Come on now. And all the angels, come on, and authorities, come on, and that's where he's seated. That's where he's seated. Now, the very interesting thing is that he is not the only one seated there now. So remember what you read in Ephesians 2 6? Up 
together, seated together. Come on, say it again. Up together, seat. Come on again. Up together, seat. So you and I were raised up with Christ, raised up with Christ together, and we're now seated together. The question is, where are we seated now? Thank you very much, smart lawyer. Look at it now. Give it to me, 1 Peter 3, 22, NLT. NLT, all right? You know, it says, New Living Translation, 1 Peter 3, 22, it says, now Christ has gone to heaven, right? Is that the first sentence there? Yes, sir. Okay. This is the way to read it now. Wale Akinshiku in Christ have gone to heaven. Listen. Wale Akinshiku in Christ is seated in the place of honor next to God. All the angels and authorities, come on now, and powers accept his authority. That is the way you must read it. Is it not scriptural? Come on, speak to me. Yes. It's in scripture. So when you read it that way, you meditate on it that way, it begins to do something to you. Cons it's called consciousness. It begins to create a picture in you. So you're not, you're so okay. Many Christians and religiously they believe, of course we know Christ is there. But let me tell you this. There's something in that verse that you might not have noticed or you notice you just, well, I don't understand but God don't understand. He says, Christ is seated next to God. So is Christ not God? Exactly. So why is he sitting next to God? The reason why that is so, listen carefully, is because for the first time in creation, okay, God became a man and he resurrected bodily as a man. He ascended bodily as a man. So right now, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 6, I believe, I think it is, put it on the screen. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 6. Who gave himself... No, let's, let's start from verse 5, please. For there is one God, come on now, one mediator between God and men. Read it. Did you see that now? So Christ is sitting in that position in trust for you and I. He did... Ah, my friend, I missed it. I was going to come down heavily on you and I remember you're fasting. <laughs> it will take a, a bit more energy for me to recover and more energy for me to just dissipate. So let me keep my energy. But your wife said I should be beating you. So uh, <laughs> praise God. Anyway, so he's sitting there only in trust for us. If he left that position and took all the fullness of of, 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 of what he was before he came down here on earth. You and I will not be able to take authority over the enemy. But he seated there in trust for you and I. So he said to them, hey, when you guys go, use my name. So when you are using, your, when you are using his name, you are withdrawing from the trust. You see, it takes time. That's why I can't teach it until we're fasting. I look at it now, five days. It's still taking you some time. Because it takes, you know, you know, this is what God showed me. Can I tell you some things? The Bible says, Paul was right, right into the Corinthian church. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 1. He said, you know, you guys are not spiritual. Paul was writing to them. He said, you're carnal. He said, he, said, he said, I cannot speak to you as spiritual people, but you're carnal. Why? He said, because I, 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 gave, you, I gave you some food. He said, look at it. Verse 2. He said, I gave you milk, not solid food. He said, until now, you're not able to receive the solid food. Only the milk, and this is what God showed me because I studied this. I took time to study this. Milk is free for babies. Eh? Milk is free for babies. It comes with the order of creation. Ah, but solid food is not free. You have to buy it. This is what fasting and does. You go to them that say, you have to purchase it with sacrifice. So when you are fasting, there's some truth you will never know. You can read it severally. You will to be here. It will never explode in your spirit without fasting. So when you fast and you pray, the same thing you've been reading before, suddenly, boom, light comes in it. You get the consciousness in your spirit. And the way you operate is different. So the way we say it is that 
I fast and pray for power. You didn't pray, you're not fasting and pray for power. It's always there. You're just coming into the consciousness of what you already had. Ah, Are you hearing what I'm saying? You purchase it. You purchase it. You know, you know, you know, you know, the disciples asked, they said, where shall we buy food? Right? The same word translated food in that verse is the same word says, translated solid food. So you buy that food. You buy it. So that, that's why, and you spend five days now, you, it means your currency is this small. Even these five days, that means you've not been doing it before. These five days, you still can purchase something. You purchase it. You must come to this consciousness. While like Akishuku ascended with Christ, because I identify fully with him, we're one together. When he ascended, I didn't ascend a day after. I did not ascend three days after. I ascended with him the same day because I was made alive with him. How many of you know that? How many of you know that we were crucified with Christ? We died with Christ. We were buried with Christ. Made alive in Christ. Raised up in Christ. Seated in Christ. Together at the same time, he did it on our behalf. You were not in the Garden of Eden when Eve ate that fruit and gave it to his silly husband, I mean, sorry, Adam. And Adam ate the fruit. But Adam is not just the name of one man. Adam is the name of humanity. Adam is also a title. Okay? So Adam ate it on our behalf. It's called the principle of representation. Adam ate it on our behalf. And then the Bible says, all have sinned. How can that be right? I was not there. All have sinned. But when Adam was eating it, I was also eating it. When Adam was disobeying, I was disobeying. If you don't really believe this thing, you can't believe the one Christ did for you. So when Adam was disobeying God, I was disobeying. When God chased Adam out of the Garden of Eden, he chased me out. When God told him, in the sweat of your face, you will eat bread, that's what exactly what was going to happen to me. Then Christ came on this other side. And, and then when God was punishing him for my sins, God was looking at Christ, but he was seeing me there, bearing the punishment also. So I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Are you following what I'm saying somebody? So now you're seated in Christ next to God. And you know, you know, it's amazing that the Bible says all the authorities, you know, you see, remember the principle of, what is that called the principle now? Representation. Is that what it says? Principle of representation. Okay. So, so when it says, give it to me again. 1 Peter 3.22. Listen, 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 listen. 1 Peter 3.22, NLC. Okay? You will understand this now. It says all the authorities, powers, all right, all the angels and powers, they've all come to accept his authority. It, what, when they say all of them, you know, it's the same principle when they said all have sinned. We didn't all eat the fruit. But the one that represented us ate it. It's happened. So, the one that is the head of all the witches, he had come to, the, to Jesus to say, I accept your authority. The head of the one that will be the head of all the occult, he has come and said, I accept your authority. Baphomet came, he said, I accept your authority. Spirit of death came, I said, you have conquered me, I accept your authority. Spirit of poverty, the principality that controls poverty, he came. So you see, in coming to bow before Jesus, all of their little, little agents are bowing before you. You're just the one that have not come to that consciousness. There is a reason in the book of Luke chapter 4 why Satan did not tempt Peter, he didn't tempt James, he didn't tempt John. He tempted Jesus only. He said... All I, he showed him all the authorities. Luke chapter 4, verse 6. We're about to pray now. Are you getting something out of this? Luke chapter 4, verse 6. He said, and the devil said to him, not to them, to him. It's the same principle of representation. He said to him, all this authority I will give you and the glory, for it has been delivered to me. I give it to whomever I wish. Keep going then. Keep going. Therefore, if you will bow before me. That's all. That's all I just need. I just need only you. Because it's the principle of representation. If Jesus had bowed before him, there's no way you and I would have been free because he's the last Adam. He's the last Adam. That's the end of the story. 
Jesus said no. Jesus understood what he was carrying. He said no way. He said no way. No way. He said no, I'm not going to do that. And he said no. And then Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 and 15. Jesus Christ then, the Bible said, he had destroyed Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 and 15. Inasmuch as then as children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same. That through death, he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is, now, the way you read this in the New Testament is that as Jesus was destroying, because he's representing you, as he was destroying he that had the power of death, come on now, you two were destroying he that had the power of death. So, and he has now released all who the last time were subject to bondage. Okay? Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. Go to verse 9. I hope you're following me. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for suffering of death, crowned with glory, and honor, he that by grace might taste death for how many people? So when he died, he did that testing for everybody. Why should you be tasting death? He tasted it for me. That accident, he tasted it for you. You should not have it. You should not have it because he tasted it for you. You should not have the accident. You will not have the accident. Why? He tasted it for you. Tasted it for you. Tasted it for you. So this is the principle of authority. So when I'm speaking now, when you are speaking also, I'm saying all of this so that you can come to your consciousness. When I'm commanding, I'm not commanding. The devil is not respecting me. I'm moving. Things are not moving because I'm a pastor. If you believe that, you've been sold a lie. You've been sold a big lie. It's not moving because I'm a pastor. It's moving <laughs> because of, my, of the light, the understanding. The entrance of his word gives light because of the consciousness I've come into by revelation knowledge given to me by grace. Based on that, all right? Now, there's a link to the pastor part of things, but that's not what I want to talk about today. Based on that is what the enemy sees. And he says, this one understands. So let's close this today by looking at an example. In the Bible, the first man that wielded the power of God to a degree that never been witnessed in history was the man called Moses. Do you agree with me? First man that wielded the power of God to a degree that never been witnessed to that point was Moses. Moses was sent by God. Go to Pharaoh. Tell Pharaoh, let my people go. That they may serve me. Moses was so bold, he went to Pharaoh. He told them. Pharaoh said, <laughs> Pharaoh shut him down. And said, the people are not busy. That's why you're saying that. He said, these people are lazy. He told him, he said, give them more work. Let them make this exact same number of bricks without straw. So Moses and the children of Israel knew they were in trouble. So Moses went back to God and he prayed like you and I pray. He complained 95% of the time. You sent me this and that, you know. And you know, read it very well. Exodus chapter 5 and 6. I've studied it several times. God is amazing. While he was complaining, every question he asked God, God never answered. Not once. Then God said to him, in, this is the way God answered him. Chapter 6, verse 1. Chapter 6 of Exodus. Verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand, he will let them go. Same thing he told him before. And with a strong hand, he will drive them out of his land. Keep going, please. And God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as the God Almighty, but my name I was not known to them. All right? I've also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, in which they were strangers. See, God is doing something here to Moses. All right, but Moses was not understanding what God is doing. All right? I've also had the groanings of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians kept in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Keep going. Therefore, say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. Second time he's repeating this. I will bring you out from under the bodies of the Egyptians, and I will rescue you from the bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched iron wound with Great judgments. I will take you as my people and I will bring you, I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God who brings you out from under the bodies of the Egyptians. Stay with me, stay with me, please. All right, we're about getting there. Keep going, verse 9, jump to verse 9. Hmm. After all of that, look at what Moses said. Moses said, 
the children of Israel. Moses spoke to the children, but they did not heed Moses because of the anguish of their spirits. Then Moses went on to complain to God. He said, I have spoken to the children of Israel. They won't even listen to me. You said, go and speak to Pharaoh. <laughs> the ones that I thought were under me, I told them, they refused to go. You know, I said, you go and speak to Pharaoh. I'm done. He said, I'm a man of uncircumcised lips. Show me that, please. Give it to me, the exact verse. Oh, verse 12. Start from the beginning, please. Thank you so much. I hope somebody is getting something here. And Moses spoke before the Lord. Look at what Moses said. This is what is going through the heart of somebody here now. Eh? Pastor, you said I should be speaking with authority. Ah. The last time I tried to, if you see the dream I had at night, he said, I spoke. The children of Israel have not heeded me. How then shall Pharaoh heed me? This is the problem I should, let me help a pastor that is listening to this. Sometimes when you are pastoring, you are going through challenges and you feel you can't pray for people because of your own challenges. You say, well, I've not yet been blessed with foot of the womb. How am I not going to be praying for, praying for people? This is exactly what is happening to Moses here. The children of Israel have not I will Pharaoh. I'm a man of uncircumcised lips. So God needed to help him solve this problem. God was trying to solve it for him, tell, giving him a revelation of himself. He wasn't understanding. Then in chapter 7, verse 1, God had to lay it out for him. God said, see, that's the revelation of it. See, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. Moses said, I can't go, I can't go there. God said, see, you're a God unto Pharaoh. Pharaoh is a God unto the people, but you are a God unto Pharaoh. You are superior to him. He said, see, I've made you a God to Pharaoh. And so that you can walk in that symbolism of God. He said, I made Aaron your prophet. You are too high above Pharaoh for you to be talking directly to Pharaoh. Speak and let Aaron be talking. Aaron is a priest. A priest must mediate before a man and a God. Let Aaron be talking. <laughs> he said, when you're walking, you can't be carrying this nonsense road you're carrying around the place. Let Aaron be the one carrying the road. And then the Bible started calling this road the road of Aaron. <laughs> it wasn't the road of Aaron originally. But God needed to show Moses the thing that you think that is above you. You're a God to it. The whole goal of this 15, 20 minutes exercise is to change the picture you have of yourself on the inside. You are loaded on the inside. I said you are loaded on the inside. The authority you are carrying on the inside, you are loaded on the inside. You are a God over witches. You are a God over wizards. You are a God over Freemason. You are a God over poverty. You are a God over barrenness. You are a God over it. Ah, when Moses heard that and he believed it, he walked into the palace of Pharaoh and he got in there. And God told him, this is where you understand authority and power. God told him, now this is now, I'm a God unto Pharaoh, right? And God told him, Pharaoh is going to ask you when you display authority, he's not going to ask you for power. He now said, he will ask you, verse 9, show yourself a miracle. Because when you declare authority, then they ask you for power. So when I tell you, pack, and you don't want to pack, when you see my hand or my waist and you see a gun there, you will move. You will move. So this, the reason why dynamics is necessary is because I gave you authority to step into dangerous places. So when those, when those stubborn demons don't want to move, then you will need dynamics to be able to keep them in check. Dynamics will never have been necessary if Satan is, not, is somebody that obeys the rule of law. But he does not. He's unruly. So you need the power to keep him in check. But if you don't understand authority, you can't just be using power. You are higher than the enemy. Yeah. Can you say to yourself, I'm higher than the enemy? Yeah. Say to I'm higher than the enemy. Yeah. Come on, say, I'm higher than the devil. Yeah. Say it, say it, say it. I'm higher than the devil. Yeah. Say it again, I'm higher than the devil. Yeah. Let's bring it to I'm higher than witches. Yeah. Say it, I'm higher than witches. Yeah. Say it, I'm higher than wizards. Oh, say it, I'm higher than wizards. Oh, say it, I'm higher than the occult. Yeah, you're higher than the occult. You're higher than the witches. To hell with all the witches. We're not on the same level. I'm seated next to God. Where are you seated? 
seated in Christ Jesus next to God. To hell with all the witches. What do they have? To hell. I'm talking authority here now. We're talking authority here now. And this authority is, you don't need to pray. It's not prayer. It's consciousness. Power is what responds to prayer. Authority does not. Authority responds to revelation. You know it is consciousness. It's power that responds to prayer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We'll get to that later. You just need to know. There's no prayer I'm going to pray today and fast I'm going to fast that my seat will change. I'm seated in Christ Jesus next to God. The next higher thing is God himself. Okay, which fasting do you want to do that you will not exchange seats? You're already seated in the, <laughs> you're already in the highest place. So the only thing that will grow is your own consciousness, understanding of that authority. That's what will grow. And as it grows, then you begin to exercise it. But you need to understand that first. So when you say, in the name of Jesus, what you're saying is that in the authority, I'm speaking not from earth to heaven for God to answer. I'm speaking from heaven where I'm sitting for the earth to answer me. So when a mad lady came into, into, into the church building some years ago in Lewa, Lewa Drive, and she was being disruptive and very disruptive and they called me and I walked in there and I saw her and she was being disruptive. I just saw her, I said, hey, so you keep quiet, follow me. And I was walking in front of her and I wasn't afraid that she can take out a knife and stab me or be violent because it's authority. The demons inside her, the trouble, they understood. This one has come with authority. If you have the same authority and you don't, you're not conscious of it, I just okay. <clears throat> Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. No, they know you don't know. You don't know. Have you seen how, I was going to say police, but not police. Have you seen how Canadian police, I don't want to say gener generally because it's not right. Have you seen how Canadian police are very, very bold? Are they not bold? Ah, <laughs> they are bold. When they, in that they carry out, when they press one button, I don't know what they're about, and that light is going on, authority is speaking now. Yeah. You yourself, it's not holding you, it's not fighting you, it's not shooting a gun. You, you start looking for the safest place to park. Is that not true? Uh, you park. And when they come near you, they say, you, you already brought out your driver's license. <laughs> and then they go back into their car. They didn't collect your key. They don't collect your key. But you can't move. The police don't collect your key. But how come you don't move? You can't move. You just, when you look at them, you just have respect. You, something, tell, your brain just resets. Something tells you, be careful. They will find you. And that's how any witch that says they will go away, angels will find them. And destroy them on your behalf. Today, we are going to exercise this authority. Are you ready to say this authority? Yeah. Let me ask you the question again. Up, together, yes. sit, yes. together. Now, where are you seated right now? Yes. Come on, where are you seated right now? Yes. You are sitting next to God. Now, First Peter 3.22, put it on the screen again, to see all those that have come to accept your authority in Christ. They've accepted it already. They've come to pay homage. You know, when a new pope is um, announced and crowned and the coronation, all, you know, the Pope used to be, it normally would be a cardinal, one of the red caps, you know, but once the Pope, it's been, the person has been announced as Pope, they change the name of the person. You agree with me? Yeah, yeah the name is changed. So the, the name, you know, the name is changed, you know. I know the name of the one that was there before was um, Ratzinger or something, the German, German guy, but this one's a large entire, like, don't know exactly, it's, it, it, take, it picks up another name. Now, when it picks up another name, then it comes out, he wears white with his, you know, and then when it comes out, it has the fisherman's ring. All the other cardinals that they used to rub shoulder together, every one of them will come and kneel and kiss that ring. It's to say that we've accepted your authority. We used to be one of us, but now we've accepted your authority. Myself and poverty, we used to be on the same level. But now, it has accepted my authority. Sickness has now accepted your authority. Loneliness has accepted your authority. Witches have accepted. Stand on your feet like a champion. Yeah. 
Okay. Thank him for the authority you have in Christ. Just going to pray for five minutes, that's it. Five minutes. Huh? Thank you, Lord, for the authority I have in Christ. Glory to your name. Thank you. I appreciate you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Are you ready? Now, all the things that you know is presently at work in your life or the life of your family that is not consistent with the will of God. You are not praying to God the Father right now. You are exercising, you are commanding it. Go! Get out from me now in Jesus' name. You foul devils, lose your hold over my destiny. Lose your hold over my wife. Lose your hold over my children in Jesus' name. I command you sickness. Get out. Get out of my body. Get out of my family. In the name of Jesus, every activity of witchcraft against myself, against my wife, against my children, right now, I command the operation of witchcraft against my family be destroyed completely in Jesus' name. I come in the authority of Christ, fully conscious of where I'm seated in Christ Jesus. I command you forces of darkness, get out! I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Open your mouth. Speak to that thing. Speak to the issue. Come on. Come on. Let's do it. One more minute. I'll pray for you now. authority. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Speak boldly. I command you oppressions of witchcraft. I command you to cease concerning my life, concerning my wife, concerning my children. In Jesus' name, I command you and the house of praise cease in Jesus' name. I'm not on your level. I'm far above you. Sickness, I'm not on your level. I'm far above you. Poverty, I'm not on your level. I'm far above you. Unemployment, I'm not on your level. I'm far above you. In the name of Jesus, I command you, get out! Pray. Just one more minute. Pray. Use that authority. Kabalabana. Rekabatona ye. If Ingilian knows it, I speak to you today. You foul demon spirits, agents of darkness, looking around me, looking around. My wife looking around my children I command you get away in Jesus name your power is broken use your authority use it thank you Lord in Jesus mighty name we pray I apologize I've taken so much of your time but I want us to just speak into the week I want you to say something to your week. You're stepping into a new working week on Monday. Say something wonderful into it. Say something into this week. Command the week. Command the week. Plant something in your week. Plant joy in your week. Plant greatness in your week. Plant breakthrough in your week. Plant pleasant surprises in your week. Speak with authority. Whatever Adam called it, that is what it was. Speak. 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 Speak, speak. Come on every day. I speak into my week. I speak joy into this week. I speak pleasant surprises into this week. I speak extraordinary testimonies into this week. 
I speak miracles, I speak signs, I speak wonders into this week. This working week started on Monday, starting tomorrow. Hear me. I speak wonders into you. I speak signs into you. Miracles. I speak testimonies into you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Yes, it is done. 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 In Jesus. By today, we are praying. By the grace of God, I have a little bit more understanding and depth than the average person in this area. So, will you want me to exercise the authority concerning you too? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over this precious children of yours that you have washed by the blood of the Lamb. Everyone under the authority of my voice right now, that is chained down by occultic powers. I speak directly to the occultic powers. I say, you occultic powers, hear me now. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ that conquers principalities and powers. I command you now, lose your hold on them in Jesus' name. Take your hands off right now. I command every bondage concerning your life, be broken in Jesus' name. Uh, every impossibility that has been rolled your way, I command it to be rolled away. Every impossibility rolled your way, I command it be rolled away. In Jesus' name. The land is pleasant, but the water is bad, he says. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, every Everything that is contaminating your destiny, everything that is trying to reorganize your destiny negatively, today I break the power of it in Jesus' name. So I speak into this week you are entering into, and I say, Monday we hear you, Tuesday we hear you, Wednesday we hear you, Thursday we hear you, Friday we hear you, Saturday we hear you. Sunday we hear you. All of you looking for gainful employment, listen carefully. They came to Elijah, Elisha, a man that understood his authority. He told that woman, forget it. I know you have your strategy, your selling strategy and all of that. He said, but go, sell it and live on the rest. You've been looking for a buyer, looking for a buyer and you planned, fantastic. You've done your target marketing, great. But I stand there in authority and I say to you, what do you want to sell? today. Go and sell it. What you are looking to buy, go and buy it. The job you are looking to get, I speak over you. Go and get it now. In the name of Jesus, I speak to every sickness in every body right now, including our people online, family, and those you represent. Sickness, I command you, go in Jesus' name. Finally, I say this. People say, I read a lot of books on organizational behavior, on different, different things, and they tell us, money is not necessarily a motivator. And I've, I, I can tell you that experientially. For some people, yeah, but money is not necessarily a motivator. But I can tell you the lack of it can be a demotivator. I tell you that, even for the most spiritual of Christians, when you don't have it at all, it can roughen your emotions completely. So I pray for you. Whatever force is holding down the flow of finances into your life, whether through gainful employment or business transactions, I command that force to lose its hold in Jesus' name. Whoever, wherever you have been owed, whoever is owing you, and that have been intransigent and refuse. No, I want to say over you, listen to me. Should we not die, but live? I don't care what they have said, but you will not die, but live. You will not die, but live. You will not die, but live. 
the door therefore to untimely death in your life I shot in Jesus name so what it says on whose authority on the authority of Christ he has tasted death for everyone I come here today consciously being fully conscious of him and I say you will not die but live so that place they say your hand will not reach that thing they say you will never get that sits in the natural they say you will never sit on today in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Almighty God I stand here on this wall today and I say receive it in Jesus name yeah. God is asking me to shift somebody to their new location and I don't know who the person is stay with me now stay with me if you're that person lift up your hands wherever you are by the authority of the Christ I shift you to your new location I shift you to your new location I shift you to your new location in Jesus name mm. I'm hearing in my spirit God says I'm the one that kill I'm also the one that makes alive is asking me to speak to kill some things to kill some things therefore the battles you faced before that is hearing his head again in the life of your own children today I command it be terminated in Jesus name be terminated in Jesus name cancer in your body be terminated sickness in your body be terminated Finally, I say this over you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Do you not know you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? For God Himself dwells in you, dwells in you, dwells in you, dwells in you. And He brought the Ark of Covenant into the house of Dagon. And Dagon fell down flat. Before the Ark, they put Dagon back there. He fell again. His arms and his legs were by the doorpost. The priest, they ran away. Better than the Ark of Covenant, stronger than the Ark of Covenant is standing before you today. I carry God on the inside of me. I tell you that. No doubt about that. I carry God on the inside of me. I challenge every devil. Therefore, the devil that's been challenging you, I challenge that devil today. I command it. Bow in Jesus' name. Fall down and be broken to pieces. Whatever has refused to fall and bow down before you that is contrary to the will of God, I stand in authority today. I decree, I command it, fall and be broken to pieces. You will celebrate at the end. You will celebrate at the end. You will celebrate at the end. There's even somebody here, you will celebrate at the end of the week. There's somebody here you will celebrate at the end of the week. There's somebody here you will celebrate at the end of the week. There's somebody here you will celebrate at the end of the week. Somebody is watching online. You will celebrate at the end of the week. There's somebody here you will celebrate at the end of the week. Wherever you are, if you will celebrate at the end of the week, open your mouth, put your hands together, give him a shout. Pastor Chuma, you're going to come in a minute, but you know what, Pastor Chuma, I knew it. I knew it's the women that want to celebrate at the end of the week. The men are saying they can wait, but where are my three women that want to celebrate at the end of the week? Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, open your mouth, give him a shout of praise. Me, I've gone crazy with this, you know. I, this thing I'm telling you, I know that I know. I've gone crazy with it. I know you will celebrate at the end. But it was Elisha that told us that sometimes by the prompting, by the prompting of the Holy Spirit, not by man-made, prompting of the Holy Spirit, a date can be attached to it. Because it's, it's said by this time tomorrow. And you know, you know, I get it for some people. 
They've not seen this before. They're used to the contemplative kind of prayer. They're just waiting, well, well, okay, if I see. I've done this for 24 years. I know it. I know what I'm doing. I stood there during COVID. I went to the door. I spoke to the dean. I stood in front of my own house too. The door. You know, he's at the door. He said, he will meet him at the gate. I, because you tell the one that think COVID cannot hear. I said, COVID, you have to hear me. I have no room for this. I have no time. Don't get me wrong. I took precautions in the natural. Don't get me wrong. But I spoke to him because I know if I came down with COVID, it's not normal. It's not normal. I spoke to it. The first Sunday, second Sunday, first one month, second month, we came into this place. They told me, I'm speaking online, I'm speaking publicly. I have to be careful. But they told me anyway, something that we needed to be here was not ready. I said, we come, we come in. They said, oh, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. I said, don't worry. Not even a dog will work his day. Even if they pack in the car park, they will sleep off until we finish. You speak to it. So, while I'm saying this thing, I need, Pastor Chuma, I'm going to give you the microphone after I say this now. I the Lord be with you, my son. Listen, I need Anne. Where are you? Come out of your retirement in Jesus' name. I need the four, the four women and the four men. Let's make it eight now. That are saying to themselves, Pastor, I believe. Hey, I believe. Hey, hey, I'm going to be rejoicing. I said here. I'm going to celebrate at the end of this week. Now, where are you? Where are you? Where are the seven heads, people? Where are you? 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 Now, wherever you are, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Give Jesus a shot. A shot. Give him a two minutes dance, and yeah, give him a two minutes dance. Celebrate it, Lord. Celebrate him. You are celebrating at the end of the week. Hallelujah. What a marvelous God. What a marvelous God.
take our offering and our tithe and we'll continue. It only if you need to go back and get your phone. But if you don't, let's take our offering and do so. Let's put the thing on the back. Hopefully, if you are new, just look on the screen or on the app. Let's continue.
somebody celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Hallelujah. The devil is in trouble. <laughs> Glory to God. God bless you. One important announcement I want to make. Give me five seconds. For BL, please, we need the men. You know, when we do our men's conference, the women show up powerfully. We need men to volunteer and be a part. Just go on the app, click on BL. As a gentleman, we need you. Please volunteer. Women, register. Men and women, invite people. Men, volunteer. See you 6 p.m. tonight. God bless you. Have a miracle-filled week in Jesus' name.